Welcome back to another lesson. And of course, we're going to continue from last week. So I actually let you watch a video and also at the same time posted a poll to check if you guys remember what we did last week. So if you remember what we did last week, we introduced the week before that we looked at reflection. And then after that, we said, let's look at refraction and dispersion, which is, which is a little bit more abstract, more confusing to actually do. And so we say we'll do a little bit of drawing this week and do the questions this week. So last week, we didn't do any questions. We just did learning, remember? Because I wanted to go as slow as possible and make sure you understood what refraction and dispersion is all about. And today at the start of the lesson, I actually showed you an experiment where a teacher is demonstrating how light can be dispersed, can be refracted, and can be reflected. Okay, so you need three three characteristics of this light, right? So reflected, you need a reflecting surface, example, a mirror or any surface that reflects bounces of the light. Refraction is a bending of the light because of the two different mediums of density, optical density. Light travels differently in water, differently in air, differently in glass. And therefore, it slows down the moment it faces some kind of difficulty and it starts to bend. The moment it bends, it will bend according to its characteristic speed, Okay, so white light can disperse as well at the same time because red light travels differently to orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. And all these lights are shown in their separate path. Originally, they were going to go on the same path and they form a yellow or white color. Sorry, what yellow? White color. So because they're all doing the same thing, they all form one color, which is white. When they split up, they can be seen in their individual colors. It's like when you go to class, we are all known as 1A, class 1A. All of us are in the same class. We are known as 1A. Then the other color is 1B, the other class. But when 1A splits up and we all go home, we all show our own individual traveling. We go, some take the bus, some take the MRT. We can see individual students going to different places and we can see them in a different, as a different student. So similarly, combine versus disperse. Okay, so these are the three things that we have been looking at all these weeks and today we have to do a lot of drawing to be able to know how to draw dispersion how to draw reflection how to draw reflection and this will be required of you in the exams this topic right if without drawing it's nearly impossible to test you because they can only ask you like common sensical questions like what is the angle of refraction do you know if the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of refraction and so on and so forth but to draw will show us that you know how it bends, and does it bend toward the normal or away from the normal? Do you know how to draw the normal? Oh, first you need to know how to draw the normal. After that, you need to know how to draw the ray. Then you need to know how it bends. Then all this is to be put on paper through your pen. So we will do it together. I know it sounds like a mouthful, like, wow, so many things. Okay, my job here is to make things easy for you. So let's make things easy for you. By the end of today's lesson, it should be easy. Let's try the question that was on the poll. Okay. Um, which of the following correctly describes how we are able to see a red apple in the white light? Are you all able to see the poll right now? Or are you able to see the slide? Or what are you seeing actually? Let me know. Of course, I don't know what. Okay. Which of the following correctly describes how we are able whether you're seeing the purple screen or the poll, it should be the same question. Okay, so we're going to just have to find out and answer A, B, C, or D. Okay, even this also sometimes is, I mean, it's a very basic, you need to be able to draw. If those of you have not answered, you've just entered the class, I'll give you like 10 seconds to answer this. Okay, so I'm going to share the answer with you, but meaning not my answer. I'm going to share the answer the students, all of you put in, put in. Okay, some of you didn't get the chance to put in your answer because you came a bit late. It's okay. You can still see what the other students answer. Four students said the answer is A. One student said the answer is C. Okay, 
Which of the following correctly describes how we're able to see a red apple in white light? Okay. Now what do you see? You see my screen, right? Okay. So this is the question. So this is called, how, do, how can you see the, the red apple even though the light is white? Right? Because our eye, which is here, is seeing the apple is red. So what happens is only red light goes to your eye. What happened to the other colors? The other six colors are absorbed. Because it does fall on the apple, it falls on any object that's around you. But where did it go? It doesn't bounce off, it gets absorbed. One color bounces off though, of this apple. This apple has this skin that bounces off only that one color, and that color is red. And so we see red color reaching our eyes, and so our eyes tell believe that the apple is red color or red in color right that's the statement that we made that all of, all our lives we have been making but how it actually happened is the science that's why you go to school to learn science right if everything we know at home then we can just say apple is red apple is green orange is orange but how it appears is a topic of light how it bounces is a topic of reflection how it's absorbed where does the light come from is it from the sun what color is the sun Sun's light, is it white? If it is white, then what are, is it, what are the colors that make up this white? Is it seven colors? Is it eight? Is it nine? What are the colors? So that's why in kindergarten, you actually learn that there are seven colors in the rainbow. And then, but nobody told you actually they all combine to make white, white light. Maybe, not yet. They just tell you seven colors in the rainbow. You learn the seven colors, but you didn't really know they actually are classed as or called white light when they are combined. Okay, so this is, this is roughly getting back in the groove. We've warmed up a bit. We, we, we just rediscover ourselves what we've been doing last week, the week before, and all that. Okay, so let's see how we can find out and complete what we're supposed to do from last week. So, because of that, I want to again refry your brain. What is refry your brain? It means remind you what you've been doing last week okay shall we okay reflection and dispersion of light this is all this is all what what we how come it, the, the notes are really there because this was done last week how many of you didn't attend last week okay if you were not here last week put up uh, your hand or just say I did not attend last week so I know and then we can quickly just go through this and then refresh our minds what we have been doing last week so these notes were already shown to the class last week Hedwin earlier you were in also the P5 P6 class Hedwin you did not attend so I don't know what level you are in Hedwin please type to me I am in primary or I am in secondary one or secondary two Hedwin and then I know who you are because then we know better. Edwin, you're in primary three. <laughs> Guys, ladies and gentlemen, we have a primary three kid studying step one science here. Okay, it's okay, it's okay. Because light is, like I said, he sees the apple red and green and orange and rainbows as well. So all of us are in this world of science. We are, you know, we are required or, I mean, we are privileged to be able to study science in any way. Or form and I'm privileged to actually discuss this video so please do not feel shy if you are in any other level you can just actively participate because all this stuff is general even your parents may not know a lot of things about absorption so they also can come here and sit down and learn right so there's no age to learning signs of how things work around us or why the apple looks red yeah okay so let's go through these slides which we looked at last week just a quick flash okay you will take exactly Three minutes, okay, I will time myself. Three minutes later, we will jump into today's questions, promise. So we will 
flash disk, refraction dispersion, we talked about having a normal and having a angle of incidence and angle of reflection, which will equal each other. Whether it's a regular reflection or irregular, the angle of incident and angle of reflection still will be the same because only thing is they will bounce in different direction, not the same, but the I will always still be equal to R because they hit one point, they bounce. The bouncing off must be perfect, but they bounce perfectly to direction north. The other one bounces perfectly, but it bounces to south. The other one also bounces, but it bounces to east and so on. But the angle is bouncing or the angle of bouncing, which is called angle of reflection, must be equal to each other. Okay, that is the point I made last week. How about this one? Okay, every slide I just say a few words and you move on. Bending of light, this one. Remember, because it's going from one medium to the other medium, be it air to glass, air to water, water to glass, as long as light is moving from one medium to another. If it's just traveling in air, it's fine. Okay, but if it's traveling in one medium, it's just like you drive a car. If you drive on the road, it's fine, right? If you drive on the road, it's fine. The car will go perfect. Suddenly, there's no more road. It's sand. Do you feel that you will find a difference on driving on sand? Have you seen cars being driven on the desert? Okay, where there are deserts and cars, you need a different type of wheel to actually maneuver. Have you seen cars traveling on snow? You need a different type of car to travel on snow or wheels to travel. On snow. That is what I'm trying to tell. Light, if it travels, it's on its own normal course, everything seems fine, smooth. But the moment the medium changes, everything changes. So it is slow down, you need to change, so it changes direction. So that's refraction. So light does that, and we know that's refraction. And because of that happening, we see something. Okay, so firstly, we saw apple red. But now we see other things. Hey, I put a straw inside my glass and then I see this. So we need to explain, right? So it's not our eyes playing tricks. It's not God playing tricks. Something is playing tricks. The light is playing tricks. The light is coming out of the glass of water because it's from glass to air. Why? When you reach our eyes, it's in air, but the light is or the straw is inside the, inside the water. So light is moving through water to get to your eyes, right or not? It's going through water and also the glass to get to the eyes. So it's bending, bending, bending. So imagine instead of going straight, it's bending, bending twice. Okay, so something is a bit crooked. What is crooked? The straw. The straw looks crooked. It looks crooked to our eyes only, but in actual fact it's not. Because we are trying to see it we believe whatever we see, right? Whatever we see, we believe. So it looks like it's crooked, but it's not straight. So this is how magicians work. How many of you love magic? Magicians work on the principle of what? Your vision, what you see. Because you suddenly see, suddenly it's not there. Suddenly see, suddenly it splits into two. Suddenly you see a rabbit, suddenly you don't. All these things are because your eyes see things. So same thing. It's similar to me showing you a straw. Then I, I said, let me show you how the straw becomes broken or bent and put it in water. And you're like, oh, wow, you can bend the straw. But essentially it's not because your eyes are seeing different things. So they, they actually depend on your eyes seeing different things. They call it illusion. So illusion is something that is not really there. Okay, it's virtual to trick your eyes into believing what you think you see, you are seeing. That's it. All right. Just like if I off the light, you cannot see anything in your room, like your clock, your table, your watch, your phone. You can't see. But does it mean it's not there? Ah, that's why the magician play a trick there, right? The magician say, you see now? You see don't have? Don't have doesn't mean it's not there. Maybe he just use a black color to block it, such your your, your eyes only sees the black. That means it's, it's always not there. So that's magic to you also. So light, uh, magic is actually a big part of light as well. Or light is a big part of magic, whichever way. So there you go. I've Last week I discussed about how light actually needs to travel through water, travel through glass, to the air, and therefore it needs to bend. And it will bend and your eyes will play tricks with you and show you a bit of bending. So can you see the straw? Can you see this part? Can you see... This part and this part also looks like it's out of the picture. 
okay? No, I actually exceeded my three minutes, huh? so we need to go a bit faster. Okay, objects appear bang, so I already discussed this because these are the few little things. Then we looked at some people looking at the fish. Looked at some people looking at fish again. So the actual and the real depth. Okay, can you see the actual and the apparent depth? It's not really the where the fish is. So if you want to catch the fish, you need to aim differently. Okay. Again, the object we re we replace the object, replace the fish with the object. So again, there is a bending because bending of light. What we see is not what we think it is. Okay, so object is actually here, but we think it is higher up because of the bending. So this is all attributed to the fact that it's reflection. Apparent depth of pool is less than the real. What does that mean? That's the same thing. Okay. White light is a mixture of different colors. This is moving on to dispersion. So I, I hope you guys know what is reflection and refraction really. Then what is dispersion? Dispersion is just splitting, it just means separate. Okay. So if something separates, we call it dispersion. So light is a mixture of different colors. So only by separating it, we will realize that. So we were also seen some examples of separation last week. And then we know that rainbow is a classic example of dispersion. And we saw in the video, how many of you managed to come into class early today? And at six o'clock, I played the video. Uh, there was a three minute video by a teacher who actually showed how she created a rainbow. Usually you think, wow, rainbow is God created. No, it's science created. Of course, God is right behind it, but science created it. How? This is part of sun. How? This dispersion of light. There is light from the sun. If it gets split or separated, there will be dispersion. You can suddenly see all the colors. So this dispersion cause, is caused by the water droplets in the air. So that's why it usually happens after the rain. And when it splits, we can see those colors of light. Instead of seeing white light, we thought it is made up of, no, it's made up of seven colors. So the, the lady in the video who's a teacher, she started showing this video to her class where she can make a rainbow herself by splitting I, mean, um, I, I see rainbow in my room sometimes when I when the glass is slightly open it's splitting the light or it hits the glass and it splits because of refraction right remember as it bends through the glass you can create a reflection so in the morning when the sun is really shining and try to see if light is bending through the glass okay and then you see if you spot any rainbows in the room yeah, I've seen it a couple of times. I don't know how about you. Okay, so using this, she actually managed to send white light through the glass and then to create a rainbow for her class to see. If you want to see this video at the end, if you have three minutes at the end of today's lesson, I will play for you. So you just stay back for about three minutes and you watch the video again. For those of you who came late, those of you who have seen it, no problem. Okay, that this is what she showed. Okay, she spent she sent light through the glass and split them, which is called dispersion, and got the seven colors out. Okay. We can also recombine them if we use another prism. Okay, why do we use prism? Why do we use prism? Not a block of glass, which is like just a rectangular block. Because in a in a in a rectangular block, what happens is whatever light comes in, it bends and then it goes out. Okay, it's not split. So what happens is, let me show you. This is white light. So this is white. Then inside, you will see the seven colors. Inside, you might see the seven colors because it's split. But when it come out, it come back recombined because it's in air again. So you cannot see the split or the color coming out yes, as rainbows. But in a prism, because they are angled in a way where it doesn't come out exactly parallel, so the light will still remain split. Therefore, we will see the split color. So that's the reason why we use prism. That will be much easily seen if we start drawing. Drawing this, where? Draw here, and then there's a band of light. And then, usually, if it's a block, it should go back this way, right? But it won't go back this way. It will bend again. And that's why we maintain the split of the colors, and we see all the colors coming out, and we see a rainbow in the air. 
Okay, we want to see in the air. Inside the glass, it's hard to see the colors. Huh? Okay, inside the glass, you may see, hey, but sure, yeah, there's rainbow inside the glass, but you can't see it because it's so minute, it's so tiny that it still looks white or you can't see the speed. But in air, you can see, okay, because of different speed. So this one also, I taught you that you can create a Newton disk. And I said, if you can find a video of people making, maybe we should just search for a Newton disk later as well. If you can remind me, okay? If I forget at the end of the class to show you a Newton disk YouTube video, remind me, then you will go and see one together, okay, at seven o'clock. We need to finish the questions first. Ah, this one is the idea of dispersion also. When the light falls, the red apple looks red because red light is reflected by the apple. We did it last week already. Okay, those of you who now find, hey, oh yeah, we did this last week. No wonder he asked me that question. So this question that we did at the start is to do with the reflection and the absorption. So if it absorbs all the light and doesn't reflect, that object will look black. Okay, white light goes in. If it reflects all the light, it will look white to me. But if it doesn't reflect any light, all is absorbed, it will look black to me. So white and black is just opposite. It either absorbs everything or reflects everything. But if it reflects particular colors, then we see particular colors and the others are absorbed. So these are the things that we need to know. And we have done question one. Very fast. Very good. Question two. The figure shows how a light ray travels from medium X to medium Y. You see, medium X to medium Y. It must be a medium to medium. It could be air, it could be water, it could be glass, it could be anything. We don't know yet. Okay, that's why they just put X and Y first. We don't know yet. Maybe we will find out by the way the light bends. We know that air is the least optically dense. That means least dense. And light travels the fastest. And here it will slow down. Where will it slow down more? In water, it will slow down. In glass, it will slow down more. Slow down the most. That means even slower. So the speed of light reduces. Because of that, the bending increases. Because of that, we call it a optically denser medium. So we sometimes can give a number to the air, water, and glass. So when you say refractive index, we actually mean refractive index of air is taken to be one, the reference point. So water is denser, right? So we give it a number of 1.3. Glass is even denser. This is all calculated numbers. Huh? It depends on the type of glass and stuff. So it, roughly 1.5. Calculated. Why? How do they calculate? Based on the bending of the light. So they show you a picture of how the light bends. Based on that, we can use angles, right? We can find, hey, what is this angle? Okay, so all of you concentrate on the diagram. What is this angle? This is called I. And then what is this angle? This is nothing. This is the angle we want. This is called R. Now, how did Mr. Ali decide that other angle is nothing and this is the angle he wants? This is where the students usually get confused because they don't know which angle to take. The smart ones can help me really. How do you know which angle to take? The angle to take must always touch the not only the ray, of course you must touch the ray, which is the yellow color. It must touch. Okay, does it touch? Yes. It must also touch the normal. If the angle is between this normal, white and yellow, then it's correct. If it doesn't touch the normal, does, or just touch the ray alone, then it's not the angle that we want. So the angle of incidence and the angle of refraction is taken accurately by these two angles, not the, any other angle. Because there are a lot of other angles. Okay, let me just put another color why the students can confuse. They will take this one, this one. Oh yeah, I should use black color. Black. Okay. They can take this one, this one, this one, this one. Isn't it? So many angles. Yeah. So you get confused. So I sit here and tell you. Remember for life. Any angle that is important, which is angle incident, must be touching the white color and the yellow color. White color is an important line. It's a normal. Yellow color is an important line. It's a way. You must touch these two. You take the angle in between those two. You are right. You're on the right track. Okay, remember that. Okay, so now we have identified the angles as well. Are we needed to know anything about the angles? Okay, which of the following correctly explains why? Light bends away from the normal when it travels from medium X to X, medium Y. Now, it is not toward the normal, okay? So it's away from the normal. They stay away. That's where is, the, where is it? Where's the clue? 
Okay, so this word away and toward are the two magical words that you need to know. If you don't know this, then uh, refraction becomes very, very difficult. So, how to remember? So, are you ready to listen? Okay, how to remember whether it's away or toward and which one is optically, which one is air, which one is glass. So, I always like to take one example and remember the example and based on the example, I will answer all my questions. So, pay close attention to what I'm going to do right now. Okay, ignore this picture on the right, on whatever they've drawn. We don't know whether it's water or whatever. We draw our own picture because this is what our textbook says and we will draw this picture which is our textbook says all the time. Universally correct. We won't go wrong with a glass block. We don't use water, we just use glass block because it's a block. Water is difficult, which is optically denser. You can see from the number it is 1.5. So it'll make the light travel slower. So what's the outside the glass block is air. So there are only two mediums. It travels from air to glass block. And I like to take yellow for the ray. So first, the ray will come down, something like that, right? Wherever it touches the block, I mean air, uh, the glass block, that's where it's going to bend. It's going to go in and bend. In order to do that, we first need to draw the normal. One, two, three, four. Can't see. Let's change color. One, two, three, four. We'll call this the normal. 100% important. Like I said, we need the yellow and we need the green. We need the two lights to determine which angle so that we don't wrongly go and pick this angle. This angle is wrong. Why? It's not touching the normal. So this angle is wrong. This angle is correct. And we call it I. Angle of incidence. Okay. This is the basic thing that you'll find in the textbook. Now it will have to go somewhere. right? You know it will bend. If it went through without bending, it is supposed to go straight through like this. It's supposed to go, but it didn't. So it can only bend toward the normal or away from the normal. So you may ask, hey, where's the normal? The normal here, lah. right here. We can draw how long is no problem. You can draw all the way is no problem. See, the normal is all the way, all the way. Normal is perpendicular. How do you find? How, hey, teacher, how do you find the normal? How come? Huh? It must touch the glass and the air at that point, and it must be 90 degrees. That is how I find the normal. Okay, so I got that. Okay, this is the normal. Now, let's look at the ray. Did it flow in? Look, uh, look closely at this arrow which is going to disappear. Which is going to disappear. Really, you want to go, disappear. Remember? Why? It's not correct. Is this correct? No, it's not correct. I do again. Huh? Is this correct? No, it's not correct. It's going through without bending. It's not correct. So, we need to bend toward or away. Okay, now this is the key part. This one is what we're going to memorize. We know air and it's going to glass block. It's tougher. It's going to slow down. So, the moment it slow down, it will bend toward. So, always, always remember, it will bend toward. Because bend away means like this. Okay? So will it be A or will it be B? A says it will bend toward. B means it will bend away. Why? Away from what? Away from normal. The normal. Normal is green color dotted line. So it's going away from the normal. Hey, bye bye, normal. I don't want to see you. The other one says, Hey, normal. Hi. How are you? I go towards you. I see. I, I go and shake hands with you. So bend, bend can bend two ways. Can only bend left or bend right. It never goes straight. That is wrong. So therefore, I'm going to erase it. All of you pay attention. Huh? Erasing. Huh? I'm going to show you. Erase, 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 erase. Okay, gone. You see? You understand? So it can only go to A or B. Now, it will go to B if I change the air and the glass law. Interchange. That means from thicker material to less thick. But we are not changing. We are just going to keep it as air to glass. We're going to memorize this because it's going to be always air first, then glass. Air, then glass. Because always light goes from air and comes to glass, hits the glass. So it will not be B. So I'm going to erase that also. No away. It will only be toward. So this is the answer. Correct? Once we know this, once we know it's toward, then we stick this in our mind and remember 
that for from air to glass block, which is thicker, from the lighter to the thicker, or the optically then it will always bend towards. That's it. So in any question in the 2021, 2022, in your sec three and sec four, be mindful that this topic I'm teaching you is appearing in your sec three and sec four science as well. So that's why it's so important. That's why it's so important. I went through it so slowly last week because if you do know this, if you do know this, you are ready for four years. Or three more years if you don't know this you're going to struggle for three years so that makes a lot of difference so we know already okay all okay i'll say okay type for me okay so far so say you can continue now i know i know what's going on let me go to the next step now the next step is reading the question the question however says which of the following explains why light bend away from the normal this is totally opposite to what we just did right because we say toward, toward is the A here, but it went away, so therefore it went here, away from the normal, which is B. Therefore, in order to be B, that means I take this, see what I'm going to erase now. This is gone, this is gone, toward is gone, all gone. It has to be away. So it will be this answer, which is what they have drawn. So somehow they have drawn that it is away. So they're asking you guys, okay? Esther, Edwin, Jerry, Aza, all of you, Micah, Nicole, okay, ask your me, asking you guys. Now, what is medium X and medium Y then? That's all, you see? Where, you see where the medium I'm circling now? This is, this two is unknown, I don't know. Is it air or glass? Is it water? Which is, which is likely to be air, which is likely to be glass, which one? Okay, earlier, when toward is, Going to be air and not water, like glass, 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 glass. Correct or not? This is the picture on the left. But now, since it's away, we just switch. It cannot be air to glass. It must be glass to air. It's opposite. That's why it's bending away. All right. All right. So, so actually, on the left, if you see, you continue. Remember, the answer should be this one, huh? If it's a glass but it should be this way. And then you draw a new normal here. Remember, every time you have a touching of a two medium, there's an interface between two medium, that means air to glass or glass to air or glass to water. You draw a normal there. Just draw one, two, three, four, five. Align there. Another new normal. This is a new normal. Why? Because it's a point where it touches again. It's trying to get out. Earlier, it was trying to get in. Now, it's trying to get out. Let's get out. At this point, where it's going to get out, it's going to decide, should I bend toward or bend away? Now, if it had gone in its normal course, it will go this way. Am I right? So, but it will not. It will not. And it will not say hello to the normal. It will say bye-bye to the normal. Bye-bye. Go away. So, therefore, it will go away. So, this is the answer. And therefore, this one is not. And therefore, we say it bend away from our nose. And this is what it means because now it's glass block to air. Remember? Now this side is air. Why, why am I saying that? This is this is air. This is glass. This is air again. Hello? So we're going to be glass to air. So when it's glass to air, it will bend away. Correct? When it's air to glass, it will bend Toward. Ah, now this question is easy already. So that's why median X must be glass and median Y must be air. And of course, it's because the arrow is this way. Huh? Hello. Again, huh? many students may miss out this arrow. The arrow in the diagram is light is going this way. Huh? Why I say it's so important? Then I know this is glass, this is air. If I change the arrow, then the glass, then the arrow is going upward. Then everything change again. So that's why Refraction can be very, very confusing. That's why. Because you need to know where is it traveling from. Is it coming out, coming in, going up, going in? Is it air? Is it flat? All that. To do all that, what do I do? Okay, very simple. Watch me erase. Let's go back to the basics and remove all confusion and say, Mr. Ali, can you erase everything and show me only what I need to know? Okay, can. Now you'll see, how come Mr. Ali only... Show me what I need to know. Okay, finally. Wow, I only need to know this. 
If I know this, I can tackle every question in the world. Okay. If I know that my I know my air glass and air diagram very well, I can draw again and again. Ask me to draw this one thousand times, I can draw again. Then this picture will show will serve as my textbook or my notes or my cheat sheet which I bring to my exam. Of course, you don't draw it and then bring. In the exam, you can draw it and it's there for you to do cheating. What does it mean? Like cheating. Cheating means it's not cheating, but cheating because you didn't bring it in. You didn't bring a textbook in, but you take it from your brain. Anything you take from your brain is not cheating. So you, you remember this, you memorize this. So you remember that from air to glass, it will bend toward, from glass to air, it will bend away because this picture will be the one that will help you all your life. Understand? That's why I erase everything. Now can see? Every conclusion, just put this picture and you will answer every question. Okay. Which of the following correctly explain why light bends from the normal when it travels from medium X to medium Y? Now it bent away, so it's not slow down. If it bent towards, remember again, you can use this cheat diagram. It bent towards right here is bent towards. This one, can you see? It says toward. It bent toward because light slow down. Now this one opposite bent away because light speed up again. It's like yay, hooray! I'm out of the glass, so it go faster. So light actually speed up. So we must find an answer here. Light speeds up and light speeds up because the others say light slow down. So there are two options B and D. And then you have it travel from, you know, you have identified this as the glass and this is the air, right? So it traveled from optically denser to the less dense, not the other way around because this one is optically denser. This one is less dense. Always air is always the least dense one. Less dense. Always the least dense. All right. Cool, cool, cool. Okay. Can we continue? Great. We spent a lot of time, but I told you the objective of today's lesson is to draw. And I did draw. I did use colors. I did make sure that you can draw like this for me too. Okay. Hopefully, you can close, you can draw this later. After this class, you just before you leave the desk, before you go for your food, before you go for your shower, whatever it is, sit on the table and just say. Can I draw light that travels from air to glass to air? Can or cannot? Can. What did Mr. Ali teach me? Hit the glass, draw the normal. Draw the normal already. Is it bent or away or toward? Is it slowing down? Blah, blah, blah. Think of all this and draw a diagram. And see whether you get the same as mine. Of course, this is the same. Not only the same as mine. It's the same as every textbook in the world because this is how light travels. Okay, so now you can go a bit faster because question three is the same. Right? A single ray of light travels through a rectangular block, emerges back into the air. So you know. Simple, this is air, this is glass, and this is air. So there is a bending. All right, we know it bent towards here, and so on. Okay, it bent towards the normal. There's a normal, this is the normal. So fast, now we are like so good at all this. Okay, so we know everything about this picture. Question is, which of the following is incorrect? Okay, make sure it's wrong, huh? incorrect. They're asking which is wrong. So just tick off the statements that we know. Now, since we are experts at this, knowledgeable about this, really, we just, just say true, false, true, false, true, false. The incident ray is parallel to the emergent ray. Okay, now we need to identify which is incident, which is emergent. So I have to clean up the board so that I think you guys know already, but still, this is the incident that's coming to fall the very first time on the glass block. Then when it leaves the glass floor, emerge out. So we call it emergent. When it emerge or leaves, something when you call leaving, leaves the glass floor, we call it emergent. These two are parallel, they say. Are they parallel? Are they parallel? Yes. In a rectangular glass block, they are always parallel. Unless it's a prism. So they're not always parallel. They are parallel only if the glass block is rectangular. Like both. So which two lines must you look at? This line. See, this line is parallel to this line. That's why when they hit, they go out also same angle. So they will be parallel. However, if you have a prism, then you have this line that is coming in and then bending and then goes out. It's not parallel to this line. You see this line and this line, not parallel. That's why this one and this one won't be parallel. They usually should be then something like that okay so it won't be 
parallel. Understand? So this is how we, so don't ever think always this first statement is true. Huh? This first statement is true only if this is, but for this statement is wrong. Okay, got it? Okay, so it is true here since we are talking about the diagram only. Alright. Now the reflected ray in the glass block bent toward the normal. Yes, bent toward. Correct. Correct. It bent toward. In the glass, it will bend toward. But as light travels faster, eh? Wrong. Uh, it travels slower. Okay, so that's why it is false. We've spotted a mistake in the student's answer. It's a wrong statement. Looks like, but the question is going to answer which is wrong, right? Okay. The values of x and y are 20 and 30 seconds. Where's x? Okay, I need to bring your attention to x here and y here. Because it's parallel already, because a is true, then c is also true. The angle, you, this one you do in your mathematics, right? You've got alternate angles and all that, so it must be 20 here and this must be 30 here. This is correct. Obviously, we need to have two more correct because we need to have only one correct. So I'm mentally prepared already. When the ray strikes the glass block, ray strikes the glass block, that means where? Incident. When it strikes means the first ray that it hits. The angle of incident is greater than the angle of reflection. Oh, now we need to, angle of incident will be called I, the angle of reflection is called R, and therefore we go to the diagram, we draw I and we draw R. And make sure, this 20, don't blindly think that 20 is the correct angle. Make sure they touch the normal and the ray. Sometimes they put here is 20, you know, and then teachers and students think, oh, 30 more than 20, correct. But this 20 doesn't mean this is, if this is 20, do you know that this will become, what, 70? Because 90 minus 20 is 70, remember? It's a right angle. So that's why you got to be very careful on what they are labeling, which one they are labeling. Is it labeling here? Or labeling here, are they putting 20 here or putting 20? This kind of thing will surely catch students out. This is what we try to do as teachers, as examiners. We try to put things in different places to see if the students spot it or not. If they don't spot, they will get it wrong, and then the, the smarter student will get it right. That's how we know you know and you don't know. If we don't make things easy, if we make things easy, everybody gets 100 marks. And I don't know who is better than the other. And I can't give a better school to the other student than you. So we try to test you in a way that we try to confuse you all the time. That's why the smartest student must be always alert. Don't ever sleep. So this is false. Or is it true? True. See, even I'm sleeping for a while. True. So therefore, the only false answer is this one. Okay, now we go to prism. Look like Ali has been talking about Glass block, he's been talking about dispersion, he's talking about prism here and there, but he hasn't really done a question on prism. Now we have to do question on prism. Okay. There you go. When light is shown, white light is shown. So you go white light. It can disperse red, orange, yellow, green, blue, blah, 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 blah. Which statement is correct comparison between red light and the violet light? Okay. So maybe the red light is this one. Am I right? I'm just coloring it for you. Just for the fun of it. No, because you can't do it, so I do for you. White light. I have a lot of time in the exam because I'm a science teacher after all. I sit for exam. I know all the answers. I finish the question in 10 minutes. I like, oh, let's do some coloring. Okay, so I do some coloring. Then what's the other color? Violet. Okay, this is violet. Now, obviously, they are splitting. They have not shown the other colors. There must be other colors. What are the other colors? Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. And that's why violet is the last one. And the red is the first one. That means the other colors, orange, yellow. So it's, it's going to look like this. It's going to be in between. Where is it? I'm going to do orange. Maybe you can't see, but it doesn't matter. I'm just going to do it. Because like I say, I got a lot of time. Yellow, then I got green. Okay, that's enough. You know what I mean. Okay, so the other colors are sitting in between. There's a huge spectrum, but they only show the two light. Question, which now you guys in sec one, sec two, behave like me and start coloring in like this. You're going to say, stop writing. The teacher says stop writing and you're still on question four and you haven't finished the paper. Okay, that's not what you're going to do. Huh? You're going to just 
immediately be smart enough to say, hey, okay, they're showing red and violet, but it doesn't mean there's only red and violet, there's all the colors inside. Which statement is correct comparison between red and violet? Red has a larger angle of emergence than violet. Red has a smaller angle of incidence than violet. Red reflects more than violet. And red slows down more than violet. Now, I think the easiest to look at is D first, okay? Red slows down more. If it slows down more, it will bend more. So we want to bend more. You see the white light going? Red light bend a bit only. Violet bend more. So violet, violet. My first observation is violet bends more. Therefore, is slower than red. Okay, slows down more. But here they say red slows down more. So the straight away this is wrong. It should be violet slows down more. Got it? Okay. Now, when they say when it reflects more, it also means bends more. Okay. So number two, as it emerges into the air, emerges means coming out. Okay, whether it's coming out or going in, you just have a look. So this is emerges. Emerge is outside, huh? this part here. This is emerge. Can you, can you guys see? Emerge. Emerge means coming out. So it must be this area. And you only look at red and violet. Again, red bends less, violet bends more. Okay? Isn't it? Reflects more. So again here, this statement is wrong. So we go step by step. Don't worry. Sometimes some questions take a bit longer because you need to really analyze. Now, red light has a smaller angle of incidence. This is just the eye, the angle. Because when you talk about angle of incidence, straight away, go look for the angle, the eye. Then the violet light before it emerges from the glass prism. Before it emerges from the glass prism. Now, since we need to look at the emergence, so we just rub away. Now, emergence means you must draw the normal. So let's draw the normal. Because you need to calculate the angle. Look at the angle. So if this is the this is the glass surface, then we draw the normal, which is 90 degrees. So both must be perpendicular anyway. So one here and one here. Okay, and the angle must be between the ray and the so which is this and this. So which angle is more? This is angle of where? Red light has a smaller angle of incidence before it emerges from. So it's not even this. I think I colored the wrong one. It's actually this. Before it emerges, the incidence. Because this is I. This is R. So the incidence is inside when it touches. So, so you see how difficult it is. Huh? Even for me, I have to draw one two and then that's the first angle and the other angle is take the ray and the normal that's the, this is the other eye so which eye is bigger ah, very very difficult to see right okay, can you see red light has a smaller because you can see because the violet light is bending more, it will have a bigger angle of incidence. So B is what? Correct. And red light has a larger angle of emergence than violet light. Ah, now emergence, maybe we go to green color. Okay, so this is actually this one. So it's on the same, which is not, it's also smaller. Red light has a smaller angle of emergence. A smaller angle of incidence. So both the red light has smaller and smaller, violet has bigger and bigger. Because why? It bends more. Can you see? My first statement when I say violet bends more. So it bends more means the angles will be bigger for violet. So angles will be smaller for red. That's it. So you slowly, that slowly, no problem. Okay, I know you are maybe like, hey, this question is a bit tough. Huh? Yeah, yeah. I'm also running out of my breath today. I need, a, I need a bottle of water. Can I drink something? Okay. While you look at the next question, you can.
Okay, so this question I can let you. Okay, this question I will let you do what is um, a new poll. Hopefully I can. Okay, so that all of you can answer. Hey guys, two percent don't answer. Come on, put in your answers. Never mind if you're wrong. Just put in. Let's see whether you know this. Like a bit like mathematics also. Right? What is the speed of light? By now, a lot of you know already. What's the speed of light? Yeah. Faster than we can do. See the YouTube video because uh, Edwin is already reminding me. You're supposed to see the YouTube this year. Okay, let's end the polling. One person still didn't respond. Don't know who. Shall I check? Okay, and then we check. If everyone got different answers, we got a problem, right? We got a big problem. We don't know what the speed of light is. Okay, the speed of light is very fast. It can reach, okay, one meter in one second. Imagine how big one meter is. It's, it's like your arm's length, right? You put up your, your hand out, your, both your hands, that's about one meter. Light can travel one meter in one second, or maybe two meter, or maybe 10 meter. So that's the question, right? It's asking you. Can okay, actually travel 300 million meters in one second. So which one is 300 million meters? It's not traveling 30 meters, 300 meters. It travels, okay, you know sound, you know when we talk, Oh, you shout at somebody, it travels only 300. Okay, sound. Sound. 300 meters per second. Whereas light, it's about a million times faster. Million times faster. So remember, it's a million times faster. Therefore, it's like this. And therefore, usually in textbooks, you will see it being written as 3 times 10 to the power of 8, meaning this is 8 zero. So you don't need to write so many zeros. You just write 3 times 10 power 8 means 3 times 3 with 8 zeros meters per second. This is the speed of light. That's how fast it travels. So can I, can you imagine, Mr. Ali, throughout this lesson, he's been saying, oh, light slow down, light slow down. How much slow down can it go? It's so fast already. Imagine even you slow down, it's still very, very fast. Okay, not so slow like sound. Okay, sound takes very long. You shout now, I think it takes it just for it to reach the other end. Imagine you shout on a on a running track. Okay, you shout from 100 meters. Okay, you shout 100 meters. It takes how long? It travels at 300 meters per second. So it takes, I think, one third of a second for somebody to hear you. Okay, but for light, you constantly see somebody, it doesn't take some time to travel. It's like so, it must divide by a million times of that. So, that's how big the number is for speed of light. It's very, very fast. Okay, so answer here is cool. Okay, so it's either we can work through these questions, which will be very, very boring now if you haven't done any of these. So, I'm going to upload these questions. I really did actually, but how many of you tried and had trouble? Okay, but there's not really any need to go through this again because the, I will go through this in the video in the 88 tuition website. Okay, you know what the website has been doing, right? I mean, you guys are familiar after four or five weeks you're here. You should know when you go to the website, you don't just see uh, these lessons being put out and you come for live class. You already know I've recorded these answers previously. 
I went through with everybody in this Singapore, basically. So you just need to click on the video and you go through these questions. So you just have to click on the lesson number that I said. You have to go to get these lesson, these questions. You answer them, work them out, and then you click on the video. I will be there discussing the questions and the answers anytime. Okay, whether it's midnight, ten o'clock, or two a.m. on a Saturday morning, five a.m. Whatever time you come back from school, you're tired, you cannot do. No problem. You still can wake up and do because I am there. It's already recorded. So just play it, and you will be able to see the solutions of me discussing, just like I am here live to you. Okay, my jokes. Uh, how lively I am, whatever, all will come through through the screen also. So I encourage you to see as many lessons as you can there. Because coming to class like this for life is actually quite tiring, time consuming. You need to be here at the right time. Maybe you haven't had your dinner or lunch and you have to rush here. That's not a good way. A good way is you come back home, you, another student reaches home at four o'clock, another student reaches home at five o'clock because she lives far away and she reaches home and she's like, okay, I want to take a shower first. I want to have some lunch first. I'm full now. I feel like studying. I want to click ADA tuition. I click on the lesson and I study at any time at, the, at your own pace, at your own pleasure, right? Wherever you are, You're on your bed, on your room, in your room, wherever. So play. So just make sure you do that step because we have made those things for your own convenience. Okay. Now you realize that online learning is not so convenient. Going to tuition center is also not so convenient, but having something there all the time with you on your phone and in your laptop is very convenient. You can click and all the topics in sec one, sec two, sec three, sec four, p one, p two, p three, p four, p five, p six. Everything has been done. Great, goodness. So you should share it with all your friends and tell them you should check out this website. It's like better than going to school because even school asks you to be there at seven o'clock, seven thirty. This one we don't. We still teach you anytime you want. Okay, and you want to prepare for a test, you get it as well. Whatever topic you want, you prepare for it in there because different schools have different tests at different times at different subject, different topics. So that's why this talk, this platform is going to really benefit and you've got to share this with your friend. Just eight of you here, but imagine 80 of you are here. But of course, 80 of you have been watching my videos, so that's why they don't come here, you know? So you get the idea. So next week, I may close this and not come back uh, because I have given you the tools and power to be able to see me anytime uh, of the day. So you don't really need to, I, I guess you guys are smart enough to know how to go to a website and see anything that you want there. Okay, you can always ask me questions on the chat facility over there or post or just check out how to get me, get to me by my WhatsApp or just ask somebody there what's my WhatsApp number, send me a question, I'll try my best to answer.